Hey guys, welcome to Indie Game Hustle. My name is Charles, and in this video, we're going to continue our Melee module uh, tutorial part of the platform series. So, uh, what we want to do here is we already have our main guy here, our little boss, evil boss man, and so he's going to need a couple of minions on the left and his right so that when we're jumping through the world, we can attack some other creatures. So uh, to do that, I already did some research and looked for a couple of assets that could help us on our journey here. So I already downloaded them um, into the project, but uh, let me show you what they look like. And I'll go into my 3D assets. The first one is called, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but Boxamon Fiery Megatune. So what you want to do is just go into Package Manager or first go to the asset store and actually download it. It's completely free and uh, it's going to look like this. So uh, that's one of them. That's the spider. And then there's another one that's uh, that's very similar to this. It's a uh, little guy here like that. So um, it comes in different colors, um, but ideally it's pretty much this one. We're gonna use the red version um, at least initially. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and install those. I already installed those. And so what we want to do is start setting them up. Now, each one comes with some pre-made animations that are going to work, I would say, pretty good. So for instance, the attack. Now, this doesn't look like much, but you can already tell by the design of this character. Um, it it's interesting that it's like a box shaped little guy and what we want him to do is attack with his mouth as opposed to I uh, guess attacking with like a weapon and so that's what both of these characters are going to do they're going to attack with their body or with uh, with whatever they have on them as opposed to attaching a weapon to them now in theory we will be attaching a weapon but it's just going to be an invisible weapon and um, so you won't really see it. It's just there for the purposes of it being able to capture the data that is needed uh, for game creator in the melee module. So um, I may, there may be other ways to approach it, but this is gonna be one way that I'm gonna go about it. So we'll see if it works out for the long term. All right, so, but first what we want to do is have a bit of a clean house and so I organized a few things. So of course, once you install uh, those assets, I moved them to my 3D assets folder here. Um, also in my prefabs folder, I have characters and then under characters, I have a folder called enemies and hero. And under enemies, I have boss, which has nothing in it right now. And then it has minions. And then we have a folder for minions for dim, which will be the little boxy demon looking character and then the spider as well um, for a hero of course we have clips shields and weapons and that's where we're going to store our clip shields and weapons and we're going to do the same thing for the enemies now in terms of the base shield and the, the base shield uh, the base shield temp and base weapon temp i created those by duplicating the original um the original assets and the reason I did that is so that I wouldn't need to redo everything from scratch each time um, because all of these different things like hit reactions and, and, and all of these things I didn't want to have to recreate that every time and so only thing we may do is remove combos and things say for instance for our little minion dim uh, we're gonna remove this to where he only has one attack as opposed to different combos, okay? And uh, drawing and sheet thing and all those sounds are gonna remain until we start to actually dive into the like more polishing and looking and creating sounds and effects in the future. But for now, this will work just fine. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is um, go into my enemy and then go into minions and then go into dim and what I want to do is create some folders I'm going to create a folder called weapons and I'm going to create a folder called clips 
and then create a folder called uh, shields. Um, and mainly, I think I'm going to approach it this way because a lot of cases, you know, if you have characters that are similar, then you could share assets. But in our case here, I think these particular enemies are going to need their own special clips, shields, and weapons and whatnot. So we're going to just go this route. So what I'll do is do that. Now I'm going to go back a few and I'm going to duplicate shield and shield temp and weapon. And I'm going to just select those and do a control D. And I'm going to move these two into enemies. And then I'm going to select these and move those into the minions. And then this one into them. I know this is a lot. <laughs> And then I'm going to take this weapon and rename it. And I'm going to have it listed as them underscore weapon. I'm going to remove the temp. And I'm going to do the same thing for the shield. Right. And then so... Um, for now, I'll leave it outside until we actually need it. Um, but for now, I'll leave it here. But ideally, I would leave put this one in here and this one in here. But I'll leave it here just for now. All right, great. All right, so the next thing we want to do for Dim is create a local motion. So we're going to need a local motion created uh, for this character. So uh, what I'll do is go to Game Creator, Character, Local Motion State. Now, when you create it, sometimes it's going to pop you back. So I'm going to double click on dim and there's the locomotion. And I'm just going to rename this dim underscore state locomotion. So this is going to be his base locomotion here. And um, so the next thing we want to do is make some changes to this locomotion. Because what we're trying to do now is just kind of build out um, the base information we need for our character, for our next character. So I'm going to select this and select idle and uh, I'm gonna need to find that idle and we have so many different idols so uh, let's see if I can locate it it's not that one boxymon so if we go here I'm gonna select this one because I do know that is an idol for that one I'm gonna right click it or double click it now I'm going to select it, and so what happened was, um, and off camera, what I did was I selected this Boxymon idle, and this is the base idle, and inside of this folder, or inside of this, uh, this file, it has the idle animation right here, and that's what it's going to kind of look like, just like that. So what I did was I selected this and did a control D, and then it out it puts it outside of here but what that does is it gives us access to these details here so we can change the loop um, rotation and we can put everything here and what this does is allows us to set the offset um, so that he can be on the ground when he's on an idle state so um, and I think we can rename it if we want uh, let's see here I'm not sure if I can rename it let me rename it yeah I can rename it so I could go dim underscore idle so that is recognizable in that regard and then I did the same thing for attacking so um, and it's going to be based on the attack too so I selected this and did a control D because this is going to be the attack that when he's boom he's going to go forward and so what I'll do is rename this one as well um, I'm going to call it dim underscore attack 02 and I may even call it chomp, chomp, or something like that. Like, why not, right? So now those two are going to be what we use. Now, there's other things here, too, like walk forward and, and that sort of thing. And we can play with that stuff later. But for now, we really just need these two. So I'll leave those there. All right, so next um, I'm going to go back into our uh, prefabs folder, back to our characters. And I'm going to go into the enemies, back to minions, back to dim. 
All right, cool. So we have our state locomotion, and I already assigned the, the dim idle there. Okay. Now we're not going to mess with any of this stuff here, but what I will do now is get our scene prepared for him. So what I'll do is take our original enemy character, and I'm going to do a control copy paste, I guess, and I'm going to move him over here like so. Now I'm going to rename this character enemy um, dim. And then I'll name this one uh, boss. All right. All right. So great. All right. So what we want to do here is take a look at what we need to do. So first of all, um, we need to change the model out. So we want to drop your 3D model here. So the model that we want is from the asset here. And then we're going to go into prefabs. And it's going to be this character here. Okay. Now, just keep in mind, if you ins if you import any assets like I have here, you're going to need to go to edit, and you're going to need to go to render pipeline, and you want to upgrade project materials to universal RP materials. So pretty much every time you install a new asset, you want to just keep that in mind when you start seeing that that really bright pink uh, texture. Um, which is just defaulted when something's not right. So you want to look into that. And it's usually because in this case, um, we're using uni uh, universal uh, URP. So, all right, great. So I'm going to select this guy and then I'm going to take this prefab here and I'm going to drag it and put it here. And so now that's our, our character. Okay. All right, so far so good. Um, so what we want to do first of all is take a look at this box or this uh, capsule collider. Now that's going to be too tall for this particular character. So what I want to do is go ahead and change that. So you can change that by going into the character controller and playing with the height in the center. So what we want to do is bring it down to, I don't know, something like 0.5 maybe. Maybe like a 0.5. Change the height to 1. Um, that's okay. Uh, we can change the height to maybe a 0.25 or maybe a 0.5. And then bring the Y up to 0.75. So we want to make sure that this capsule ends right at its feet here and then it ends right at like where his head is so that's probably a fine height it doesn't need to be like right on his head i mean you could do that i mean there's nothing stopping us from making it literally the same height but for now i think that can work we can play with the details later but um i think that works out pretty good all right so um Let's see, what I will do is actually center, let's make a point six. And see, and then we want to bring this. Maybe something like that. So the height can be like a point. Point four. Yeah, let's just go back to, because I think that's that's fine for now unless we run into an issue. So we'll we'll leave it just like that. So that's pretty good. So, all right. So we set up the character to make sure that that is correct. So also let's put in a new um, default state. Now we're gonna go into our prefabs here. Character, prefab, and we're gonna go to enemies, minions, dim. And we have that that state locomotion, so this is going to be kind of like a base uh, state for him. So, so what we're going to do is drag this and put it here, and it's going to remove the default state. So if we were to hit play, he should be already in an idle state without doing anything because of this. And let me turn off the gizmos. All right, 
And the main reason he's not is because there's some other things going on here. So let me just double check that. Um, because, <laughs> because the mechanics are here. So what we want to do is change that. Remember, we copy the player from there. So it's also take a, it also takes the mechanics with it. And so we don't want to use these particular mechanics with it. So what I'll do is I'll just deactivate that so that it doesn't uh, turn those on. And let's see. Okay, good. All right, so now we have our player, uh, our little enemy guy here. And of course, he can't be attacked or anything. Um, but that is the default state that we're looking for in terms of an idle for him. And that looks great. And he's touching the ground properly, I believe. So that looks good. And this guy is doing what he was doing before. All right, great. All right, so now let's take a look at those mechanics and start from the top. So in terms of trigger attacking, remember we have a dim shield and dim weapon here. And we don't want him to have a weapon in his hand. We want him to attack with a, a forward thrust. Um, and also just something I just thought about is that I don't want him to return to this position on the map. So what I want to do is create a new uh, marker just for him. And I'll put it in this position here. And I'll change it to red just because he's an enemy. And then um, what I'll do is move this marker below the other. And I will go into this and just basically mark this like that. And so when he moves, he'll go to this spot as opposed to that one. Um, makes it much easier. All right, cool. All right. All right, so we're going to take a look at the trigger attack, trigger draw. So we want him to draw a weapon. Okay. So what do we want him to draw? We want him to draw a shield and a sword or a weapon and a shield. So in his case, there is no weapon. So how do we address this? Um, since it has to have some type of like game object to represent a weapon, what I was thinking is maybe we can create a sphere, um, and use the sphere to represent where the attack is ta being taking place. Um, and then in game, the sphere itself will just won't show the mesh itself. It'll just be the representation of what it is, right? Cause it's his whole body. So let's see if we can address that. So the first thing I probably want to do is go to draw actions. Right now it's taking in this hammer weapon. So I'm going to go ahead and move that and change the shield to this and then change this to this. Okay. All right, cool. So that's going to be his base weapon, base shield. Great. All right. So I'm going to select weapon. And right now it's holding a hammer. So we need to create a weapon just for this section here. All right, cool. So let's do that. Um, also the character state sword uh, motion. I'm thinking we can also change this out as well. So I'm going to take this dim state locomotion and drop that there um, as well. Okay. So that he doesn't go into that particular pose um, that the other uh, characters are doing when they're in this state. Um, and that's fine. All right, great. So let's go ahead and create a weapon. So to do this, um, I'm going to simply create a sphere. So a game object, I'm going to go to 3D uh, object and create a sphere. All right, perfect. And then we so we have this here. All right, and then we're just going to call this dim weapon. All right, and we're going to need to add a blade component onto it. So we already have that there. I'm going to put in debug mode. Okay. And as you can see, it has, you know, this pre setup thing here, but we're going to get rid of all that. All right. And so I'm going to take this weapon and I'm going to drag it into this folder so we can turn it into a prefab. Okay. All right, and I'm going to bring this down. All right, great. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit this arrow here to go into the prefab mode, and we're going to change a few things here. All right, so the first thing, starting from the top, debug mode, we want that to be true. I'm not going to mess with this point A and point B. 
yet. Um, in terms of the capturing the hits, we're going to change this to a sphere. And then we're going to change the radius of that sphere to be something like this. Now, we could, um, because he's a cube, realistically, we could make it a cube. We could make it a box and just simply make it so that it's literally like it looks like him. So wherever this is, it just we can just put it where his body is located, and that could actually work. So maybe we can do that. So let's just see if this does work. Um, I was going to do sphere because it's a sphere, but let's see if this works. All right. So um, I'm going to make it a little bigger, though. I'm going to make it like a 2.5 by uh, 1.1.25. Okay. And so we're good there. Now, in terms of the weapon trail, um, remember, the weapon trail is based on the blade edge, point A to point B. I don't think that is really necessary in this case, but um, we could see what it looks like. Let's see. Uh, I don't really think it's necessary, but we could leave it there just to see if it does create a trail. Um, I will take that and maybe have it start behind him maybe I don't know we'll see because I know it's it's more like this than it is like that it should be interesting hmm we'll leave it there uh, I'll just turn it off because I don't think it's necessary right now but for now I'll just go back to box and this works fine so there's our weapon and uh, there's nothing special really about it other than that so what I'll also do is turn off mesh renderer so that the cube or for the the sphere doesn't be seen in the scene or seen inside the the game scene, so I'll go back. All right, cool. So we have that perfect, and that should work out pretty good. You're not gonna see it because it's off. All right. So now we have our weapon. So what do we do with this weapon? Well, we go to the weapon asset that game creator creates. And we need to put that weapon and replace our mystic hammer. Okay, so we're going to drag it, drop it, boom. Next, what we want to do is change the attachment location. Uh, we want to change the root, and we're going to put the offset to be zero in this case, because um, it should be where his body is located. Zero should be locally where the character is. So in his case, his body is where we need it to be. So we'll see how that works. Now, in terms of drawing, sheathing, and all these other uh, settings here, we're going to leave these the way they are because um, we don't have our own unique custom sounds and, and all that yet. So that's why I wanted to leave this and use this um, so that we didn't have to deal with that yet. Okay. Um, below that, though, we will remove um, pretty much 90% all of these except for one. And so I'm going to get rid of uh, this one. We're going to get rid of the on air. We're going to get rid of input backwards, input forwards. And we're going to get rid of attack two. And we're going to get rid of attack three. Now, this right here where it says my attack um, melee clip, we're going to need to change this. And so as you can see, it says my attack one. What I'm going to do is do a control D on this my attack, it's going to create a my attack four, but that's okay. We're going to rename this to dim underscore my attack one, right? And then I'm going to move this into the uh, prefab folder where those things are. So I'm going to click and drag this into the dim folder, and it's going to be right here. And so now when I click on weapon, I want to have this replaced with this. Okay, great. And so now I'm going to select this attack. And what we need to do is now change this information because we need a certain animation for his attack specifically. So what I'm going to do is look for the dim attack. I think I already created it right there. So it's that chump attack that I want. So I'm going to double click that and it's going to add it there. All right. And we'll leave this transition in and out as it is. Um, and what we need to do is hit this extract root motion because I believe this is going to be based on the previous animation that was listed. So when we select it, it's going to change a little bit. And so you want to make sure you um, extract that root motion. 
Now we're going to leave the movement multiplier alone. We're going to leave pretty much everything else alone until we see what result we're getting. And then we will adjust based on that. All right, cool. So um, in terms of this item here in the scene, we can delete this. This was just so that we can get it ready and set up. So I'm going to hit delete on this uh, prefab because we have a prefab. And so it's right here. So ideally, um, what we need to do now is go into our attack, draw actions, and make sure that that's selected properly. So we have dim weapon, dim shield, and then we have uh, this other trigger, which is the movement trigger to move him back into place. And then we select dim. We also want to make sure that the melee is selected or added to him. All right. So, um, Let's take a look and see if things are working as they should be. All right, so I'm going to hit play. All right, so um, don't know what these are animation things. So we'll take a look at that type of stuff later. But for now, um, so he should be good. And let's see if he reacts and he reacts as well. All right, great. Now, of course, he's not um, attacking us yet because we haven't created a trigger or an action for him to move or attack. But we're going to do that now to see if his animation is playing correctly. But he is definitely taking attacks from us, which is great. And he is also moving back to his position as needed. All right, perfect. All right, great. That looks great. So now let's set up a trigger for our little dim guy here to attack us. Um, so right now we have a trigger for drawing. So let's go in here and we want him to specifically attack. So I'm going to right click, go game creator trigger. And I'm going to call it chump attack right because that's the type of attack it is I guess and then on start I want it to start and then an action I need to go to melee and then what you want to do is do input melee attack and then it's going to um, you need to select the player so we need to actually select the character and then we're going to take this character dim and drop him in there like that and then so when this action is played, it's going to hit the key A, not the key on your keyboard A, but it's going to hit the key that's associated with the weapon uh, combos. So it's going to, this is the key. So it's going to play this combo or this particular melee clip. Okay. All right. So, and I also want him to repeat this action. So I want to wait three seconds and then I want him to restart that action. Okay, cool. All right. So actually I'll do it two seconds. All right, cool. So let's see if this works and hopefully he plays a chomp attack and everything's great. So let's see. All right, there we go. So it looks like he's chomping away and he attacks me and he's gonna fall off. Great, perfect. And All right, so I can hit him back and he'll just keep chomping away. Perfect. And that's what we want. Um, that's just to kind of get us going. And he's turned around mainly because um, it just moved him back after I think 10 seconds. He's going back to this position. So it's going to reforce him to turn around. Cool. All right. So that works out pretty good. All right. Now let's take a look at the gizmos to see what's actually happening. So the box isn't where I thought it would be. And he falls off. That's fine. We'll deal with it. But the box isn't where we thought it would be. Um, 
and so we're going to need to correct that and let's see here so i'm going to hit play so i hit pause there and so the box is probably at the zero position um, but we're going to need to offset that um, a little bit here so that it's not necessarily physically like right there. We need it to be like its whole body. Um, so let's see here. So what I want to do is select it, the clone. And that's going to be the weapon, dim weapon clone, just like we said before, we have to select the clone. And it's right, like I said, it's at the zero position. So what we want to do is, boom. So right now, that's his zero position. What I want to do is move it up on the Y and forward a little bit. Because that's where the chomp is taking place, like right there. And so that's what we, I think, what I want to do. Okay. All right, cool. So um, that works out pretty good, I think. So all it really is is 0.5, I would say, 0.5 and 0 0.4. 0 0.5, 0 0.4. So I don't think I need to copy paste that one there so 0 0.5 0 0.4 so position 0 0.5 point four all right and then what I'll do is uh, go ahead and do a new shape that's not what I want I don't want a sphere I want a cube I build that and I'm only doing this so that he doesn't fall off oh this one okay all right so I'm just gonna go ahead and bring this like this because he's moving forward and I don't feel like starting over just because he wants to fall off the map. All right. So we're going to just move that there. I'm going to duplicate it and put it on this side as well. All right, cool. So that should be good enough for now. I can even bring it down. He's not going to jump out. So, all right, cool. All right, there we go. All right, so... um. I'll check on this error because I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. Um, it, maybe I need to reset the Unity, um, but something to do with the uh, Unity editor. And so uh, we'll play with that. I'll figure that out later. But for now, I'm going to hit play. Clear that. All right, good. <laughs> All right. All right, cool. All right, great. All right, so that works pretty good. All right, so now what I want to do is think about how long do we want his attack to be active? Um, I want it to be active like literally as immediately um, in his case. So um, what I can do is go to the melee attack clip, right? And remember we were talking about how we can change that. So I want to make this frame active as much as possible. I think this will give us that um, 
that will give us that. So let's go ahead and see now um, what happens with this. It's longer, so it's it's gonna be red longer now. It's not hitting me because I'm behind uh, touch them. I think it's as long as my weapon is colliding with his. how this is working. Alright, cool. So that seems like it's working pretty well. I think it can work for us. So his whole is something that we can attack. So that works out pretty well. Alright, cool. Alright. So for that little guy, I think that is pretty decent. I'm not sure if I like the box though, but uh, maybe I can, I mean, you can always switch it. So as an example, if you don't want the box, you can always just go in here and change it to something like a sphere. Um, and you can make the sphere larger um, if needed. Um, I think a sphere seems better though. Uh, I'll just go with maybe one, I don't know, maybe one. And let's just see what this sphere looks like. Much bigger, yeah. Yeah, t to me that seems better. Um, whoops. Yeah, I think the sphere works better. It just seems as, seems like it's just more accurate. Of course, there's other ways we'll probably do this, guys, but um, I think this could work. We probably would make it smaller. Or not, we'll see. So now, if you notice, though, you don't get hurt or it doesn't showcase any type of damage necessarily by just running into him that's more like when he's attacking specifically he's making himself um like ready to attack so now we could add some additional things onto him that can drain damage from us and um basically uh give us like an input of an attack that's separate necessarily from from this and we we can go into that later. Um, but for now we're just focusing more things that have to do with the melee module as opposed to um, using some of the other uh, things. All right, so I hope some of these things are making sense. Uh, the melee monster can be complicated, but I think it's really simple once you kind of look at it for what it is and what it does from a, just some of the basics. Um, cool. All right, so we were able to set him up and set this guy up. Now we want him to attack. It would be pretty much the same thing. Um, and getting him some actions or some triggers that will force him to walk around and, and attack. Now, I could have one of these guys actually follow me um, with that, but we're not going to do that in the video. We'll deal with that later um, once we start thinking about, like, actual, like, behaviors and things like that. So, all right. All right, so I think that's it for this video, just to kind of get that going. Um, in the next video, I'll look at the other little spider creature and we'll go from there all right guys hey guys thanks for tuning in for the next set of videos i'll be releasing one every day at 10 a.m eastern time so to stay up to date on the latest 3d platforming tutorial feel free to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to support you can find me on patreon or of course you can hit me up on discord i like to talk about whatever project you guys are working on of course thanks for hanging with me your support is always appreciated as always remember 
Never give up and keep moving forward. Peace.